Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, All in Crypto here, and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for another YouTube video, or it's certainly the morning where I am, so evening, afternoon, wherever you guys are. Today, we're going to be diving into our daily cryptocurrency market update, and we've got a lot to share. One thing that we keep reiterating and really emphasizing in these videos is just the fact that crypto adoption has not slowed down, despite the price action. The price action that we're currently seeing for the crypto space is largely tethered to external markets, geopolitical events, macroeconomics, monetary policy, and so on. Yesterday was a very significant day for the United States and the world at large, really markets at large, as we saw the first implementation of a Fed fund rate hike, an interest rate hike. This is one of probably many to come this year, to be honest, um, and they have to. We have stressed the fact that the Fed, and I'm going to play you a clip from Jerome Powell. I'm not going to play the whole uh, hour or so clip. I'll just play you the first or, or, or one of the questions we've been saying, OK, you know, we've got all the criteria for a recession at hand. By the way, guys, this is extremely relevant to crypto. You, many of you go, OK, what, what are you talking about geopolitical and, and, and macroeconomic events for when you're a crypto channel? Well, if you haven't quite come to terms with the fact that crypto is now very tethered to the economy at large, I'm not really sure what to say. We've been talking about this for six months now, nearly um, or around about five months. I won't over exaggerate. Uh, and the reason being, when lots of other people have been very crypto focused with their blinkers on, is because there's a huge correlation there. And we're seeing that. It's been proven. Um, but ultimately, again, stressing the point that I mentioned at the start, crypto adoption has not slowed down and in fact is accelerating at a great pace. Today, we've got news. Ukraine's uh, Zelensky signs virtual asset bill into law, legalizing crypto. Russia also did a similar thing. You know, the US is now tasked... Um, or there's been an executive order to task various agencies within the US to regulate this asset class and build a framework around it. Um, and we are going to talk about all that in this video. But we're really going to start with a clip from Jerome Powell. We have said, OK, we've got these sort of um, factors that would cause an inf um, not an inflation, cause, cause inflation definitely, but cause a recession at hand. We've got all three of what typically causes it, war, um, high commodity rates and high inflation, uh, or sorry, um, monetary policy tightening. Um, but Jerome Powell actually doesn't really see a recession as a threat. Now, Jerome Powell telling you the economy is healthy. Some metrics would definitely say that it is, but it's kind of like, um, you know, calling Kim Kardashian natural, for example. Uh, that isn't a dig at anybody. Um, just, you know, it, 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 it's not the case um, in on many fronts, but it is on some, like the labor force. Um, so we are going to get into this clip of Jerome Powell. Um, and then we're going to go over a number of interesting articles. So this was a nice little meme that I really liked from Blockware Solutions. You've got the 25 basis point hike, which is only a quarter of a percent. And you've got a 7.9 inflationary rate. Also within this, Jerome did indeed say that, you know, this is likely to can, we've not seen the worst of inflation yet. And we know that Bitcoin is very range bound, very tethered to everything that's going on. We are setting up what typically would be more of a bullish structure than a bearish structure, a structure that has more probability to break to the upside. But there's a lot going on. You know, it's very thrashy. We were tracing a lot of the moves that we made, but we'll talk about the Bitcoin chart, the kind of um, more logarithmic lifestyle or lifetime of Bitcoin and everything else once we've sort of uh, listened to some of Jerome's comments in regards to yesterday, where he thinks the economy is, where it's going, and in fact, are we heading towards an, um, a recession? Very interesting. So we'll have a listen, like you guys sort of make your minds up on what you think about all this, and then we'll dive into the rest of what we got for this video. Me is very strong and well positioned to handle tighter monetary policy. To conclude, we understand that our actions affect communities, families, and businesses across the country. Everything we do is in service to our public mission. We at the Fed will do everything we can to achieve our maximum employment hmm. and price stability goals. Thank you. I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go to Gina at the New York Times. Hi, Chair Powell. Thank you so much for taking our questions. I wonder if you could detail your thinking a little bit about how you're considering the, you know, the risks of going too fast and potentially tipping the economy into recession and how you're weighing those risks against the possibility of going too slowly, allowing inflation to become embedded and, and kind of getting behind the curve. So, um, I guess I would start by saying that, in my view, the probability of a recession within the next year is not particularly elevated. And why do I say that? Aggregate demand is currently 
strong and most forecasters expect it to remain so. If you look at the labor market, also very strong. Conditions are tight and payroll job growth is continuing at very high levels. Household and business balance sheets are strong. And so all signs are that this is a strong economy, in, indeed uh, one that uh, will be able to uh, flourish, not to say withstand, but certainly uh, flourish as well um, in the face of less accommodative monetary policy. So uh, I guess that's how, how I would say I'm looking at that. Of course, the objective is to achieve price stability while also sustaining a strong labor market, and that, that is our overall objective. But we do feel the economy is very strong and well positioned to withstand tighter monetary policy. Just wanted to play that clip. So that's Jerome basically saying that he doesn't think a recession is at hand this year. Um, the, he does later on go to say, look, the outlook for the economy is very uncertain. So there's lots of contradictory statements there. One thing we do know is the labor force market is actually doing rather well. Um, and that is one metric that you use to weigh up the economy. He also talked about stable prices, which of course we don't have. So the Fed are very, very good at picking and choosing what they do champion and what they don't. Uh, and of course, the labor market is something that they're champion. And it's kind of like they've been calling inflation transitory, transitory, transitory. And then, oh, no, it's supply chain, supply chain, supply chains. And now, of course, it's the war um, that's causing um, inflation and, and, and sort of prices, commodities to rise across the board. So that's Jerome talking. There is an element of potentially a strong economy um, with what he's talking about in regards to the labor force. But I would ultimately argue that we've got three pretty heavy pressures upon markets across the board. We've got rising commodity prices, which affect everybody, certainly, you know, within the category of everybody, lots of people that put money into markets, retail investors that may not be as flush with cash. We've got a um, monetary policy um, change in the form of a 25 basis point interest rate. And this is the first of a number to come. So this typically takes liquidity off the table in forms of people borrowing money because it's become more expensive to do so. Uh, and then, of course, we've got the geopolitical events, which have really cast a very uncertain cloud over markets. And Jerome has said that but one thing he's adamant of is that, um, you know, the economy isn't actually in a, you know, can withstand these kind of interest rate hikes and they have to hike interest rates. We spoke about this in our other video um, where we were essentially saying, look, they can't not do that at this point. Their credibility is in tatters. Um, and not only that, they have to up it so that they can later bring it back down. You have to stop um, stimulating and support the economy only to redo it at a later date. This is a big game that we are playing. This is why we are all in crypto guys. Um, and by the way, being all in crypto doesn't mean that you actually have to be in Bitcoin or a cryptocurrency that moves. You can be in a stable coin. You can farm very healthy APRs, APYs off stable coins. We're going to do lots of videos talking about that um, because it's very little sometimes to no risk associated with that. And certainly if you're leaving money in a bank, um, which to you guys, what you do with your money, you're getting maybe 0.5%. Um, which is laughable when inflation is at 7.9%. Certainly that doesn't beat anything. So, it, it, you know, we've got a, talking about inflation, Bitcoin has a fixed inflation rate that actually halves every four years. And that's what the halvings are. And it's what's really driven the four year cycles previously. I know many of you are new to crypto, so I like to keep mentioning sort of trivial stuff like that or, or stuff, uh, trivia um, to the crypto market. So here we've got Ukraine essentially signing a bill. Ukraine has received 100 million in crypto donations during its current situation um you know this is the reason that i really highlight this more than anything is just to show you this is another one bites the dust you know another country india you know russia soon to be the us all embracing and many others all embracing crypto one of the only ones that hasn't has been rather against it of course is china the internet is largely banned and restricted in china so it's kind of not too out there to think that they would ban a decentralized um, form of, of a value of currency that they ultimately can't control. Um, and, and there's a huge debate. We know that they uh, got rid of all the Bitcoin miners within China. Um, but there's actually two sides to that story because they kind of almost had to do that because in some parts of China, there's a real energy crisis. That was before all of this took place and they were struggling to keep the lights on in certain places. So this, of course, was the big news yesterday. Saw markets do quite well off the back end of it. Uh, I don't actually think I've got, you know, you, you, you are seeing... Today, we saw a really strong open for oil, um, but of course, it's sold off. You know, it's very typical when you get a move like this, it's very fear driven that you come back down to the other side. It's kind of like what we were saying about this move over here for Bitcoin. Panic driven, quite common, you get a return move. This 
is strategically exiting a market and potentially a bottoming out. If not, you're more likely to come down to previous support. Um, but ultimately, my bias is always that we go to the upside on a macro bull time frame. So a big term time frame on a short term time frame, you know, you, you're really just taking prob probability based guests based based on a number of things. So it can be very, very easy to call a bull market, by the way, guys, we got pretty much every call that we made here spot on. Different story when you're in a very uncertain geopolitical and monetary policy moved market. Um, because, you know, markets don't act really in the way that they potentially should. They act very irrationally. Um, and there's a, a, a brilliant saying out there that all ships look good on calm waters. Um, meaning, you know, when the waters get rough, you really, the boys get separated from the men. Um, so what else have we got? Well, HSBC diving into the metaverse. I mean, this is significant. HSBC is the first global bank to enter the sandbox metaverse, joining a swath. I don't even know what that word means. Of other big... Brands including Warner Music Group, Gucci, and Adidas. Another one bites the dust again in, in that terms. Um, this is nice to see. Congress members concern SEC stifling innovation with crypto scrutiny. They absolutely are doing that. But the SEC, you've got to remember, are playing, they're on a tightrope. They've got people to appease. And crypto often, you know, crypto has been negative for the stock market. I was talking to somebody, you guys know that I was very against Dogecoin. You live and learn turned out to be one of the the reason i was against dogecoin was because of the technology driving it i i'm i've got a very good understanding i believe you guys are really the ultimate deciders of that of the crypto space and there's nothing behind dogecoin in the sense that it doesn't even have its own mining it's essentially just a copy of bitcoin um and paired with litecoin's mining um so it doesn't there's nothing going on there so i didn't really think it was a good investment turned out to be one of the best investments of 2021 so it goes to show and that how do you think people feel seeing people make 100,000 X or whatever it was um, off the of Dogecoin being sat in a stock? You know, it, it, the stock market has been or crypto has been very negative for the stock market and its outlook um, and also a number of other things. For example, a, a Bitcoin ETF, which means they'd have to hold spot ETF that I think would take quite a bit of money off of a gold ETF, which would potentially see the price of gold fall. Um, so the, 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 the SEC are really walking a tightrope, but they are definitely stifling uh, innovation within crypto certainly within the us and i think this is one reason the executive order and it actually mentioned the fact that um part of this order was to make sure that the us maintain its status as the leader in innovative technology you know and that's what they're not doing right now they need to embrace it i think actually currently uh who was i talking to about bitcoin I was talking to somebody who actually owns a large bitcoin mining company um, in Switzerland. And he was essentially saying the US in terms of hash power is really leading the race at the moment, which is nice to see, you know. Um, but anyway, we're getting off topic. So this is nice to see a bit of a pushback. Um, overburdensome. Eight members of Congress have exposed concerns that Gary Gensler's scrutiny of crypto firms is unfair, um, suffocating, uh, is unfairly suffocating the industry. It's really nice to see a bit of pushback there. And I think this is going to continue. And ultimately, you know, Gary understands crypto. He used to teach at MIT, one of the most renowned universities, technological universities that there are, um, or colleges, I think, called in America. Um, and, you know, he, he knows what he's doing on both fronts. He also understands the traditional world. He's, a, he's an excess um, Goldman Sachs banker um, or Goldman Sachs um, employee. So so he's, he's walking a real tight work. Nickel's falling. You've got oil. My only concerns with this and, and the real threat to crypto crypto uh crypto is further um if the economy yes the labor force is strong but if commodities and everything keep rising that hurts people petrol diesel where where i am is has gone up significantly that's going to start hurting people in the pockets and people are typically the people people are typically the drivers in many respects of um bull markets in the sense that they do play a huge role in it certainly when you get those blow off tops and if commodity prices keep keep rising so we've seen a pullback expected after a move like this keep rising like i think they will well this is going to crush people uh, and they're going to be less fruitful i.e put less money into markets so that's really all i have for you i've rambled on for long enough if you've enjoyed this content a like is always appreciated so is a comment and i look forward to seeing you all in the next youtube video remember guys if you can please like comment as well because it really helps me out on the youtube algorithm which has been rather unfair to me at the moment um, and of course subscribe and hit that notification bell also go ahead and give me a follow on twitter at real all in crypto catch you in the next video guys thanks a lot for watching enjoy your thursdays